Here we have some small bottom margin on this paragraph and larger top margin on this button group, and the margins are overlapping each other. So if we have two paragraphs in this section, we'll have less space between the paragraphs and more space between the button and paragraph here. Margins are better than flex gap for spacing apart text because it allows each element to have its own custom spacing and allows us to globally update that spacing. If we want to increase the top margin on all button groups throughout our site, we can. If we want to decrease the bottom margin on all paragraphs, we can make that global update with a level of control flex gap wouldn't give us. Now, sometimes we want to center align text within this element. And here, because this paragraph has a max width, we also want to move it to the center. We could add margin auto, but that wouldn't really connect to our alignment variables. So instead, we would want to apply flexbox to this entire content. Now notice when I turn this on, we have more space between the button and paragraph whenever flex is enabled. And that's because when a parent is set to flexbox, the margin of the children no longer overlap each other. So instead of applying this entire uh, parent as a flexbox, we want to set flexbox on each of the children rich text elements. Now to do this, we can create a class called uChildContain. And for this, we'll go ahead and apply a vertical flex so that if we have multiple paragraphs inside a single rich text, they stack under each other. On Y, we'll center them. And on X, instead of just applying left center or right, we'll connect that to a variable mode so we can just switch the alignment from the entire section. Now for this alignment variable, its value can be start, center, or end. And that works for both text alignment and flex alignment. So we'll go ahead and just copy this variable name and here on this uChild contain, we'll go ahead and set its text alignment here. That way we don't have to reapply text align to the whole section. Each of the children will just be connected to that variable automatically. And we'll set flex alignment here as well. Align items, and I'll connect that to the variable, and that's connected there. So now I can go ahead and apply that uChild contain to this entire paragraph. And that means if I switch the alignment mode on the section, let me go ahead and just clear this text align I had here. Um, so we'll go up to the whole section and we'll go to alignment and we'll switch this to center. And now the paragraph is automatically respecting that and the flex alignment of this paragraph is respecting it as well. Now, because this paragraph has a max width, we're not actually seeing it aligned with flex. So on this you child contain class, we'll give it a min width of 100% of its parent. So it's always full width. And inside of this uh, rich text on this child, we would want to give it a max width of inherit. So it inherits from its parents max width. And that way the flex alignment on this parent is actually moving the child. Now, whenever this rich text is connected to a component, we can't actually add a class to this child. So what we can do instead is use custom code for that. Uh, so inside our custom code, we'll say anytime we have a uChildContain class, which we'll set right here, then we'll find all of the direct children inside of that rich text, whether it's paragraphs, headings, or images, and we'll set their max width to inherit from the parent's max width. So now without having to give that child any kind of class, it automatically has the max width we applied to this parent. And we can do the same thing on this entire hero heading, I'll assign you child contain, and now the max width is inheriting from the parent. And if we switch our alignment mode on that parent, we'll notice that it's moving the text alignment and also the flex alignment for each of these elements here. Now to actually use this in practice, we would start with something like a uh, heading sort of component, and that already has the you child contain class on it. So if I take that off, the heading goes back to its normal alignment. But as soon as I add that on, it's inheriting the alignment variable we assigned to the whole section. And I can do the same thing for a paragraph. I might want to tighten up the max width sum here. We'll try something like 40 CH. And now it's affecting the max width is being applied to the entire rich text, but the child paragraph inside is inheriting that. And if I have multiple paragraphs, I'll say another one, um, what we'll notice is there's space between these because of this U rich text class. That's the same class we use on blog posts and things like that. And it just gives the child inside spacing between text elements. So if we wouldn't have that on, we wouldn't actually have that default margin between our different elements there. And we can also go ahead and add in our button group. Inside this, we might go ahead and add in our button elements like so. 
And because that button uh, utility is also connected to that same sort of alignment mode, then it'll also work from here. So it's connected to the exact same variables. And so now we can go over to the whole section. And instead of applying alignment in here, we can use alignment variables uh, or classes. So we have alignment, center, end, or uh, start. So I'll do center here, and it just centers everything out nicely. Um, if I don't actually have this U child contain, then the entire text element just has the max width here instead of its children having the max width. Um, so I'll just add that back on like so. And that's all we need to connect up our alignment variables.